Hello and welcome to today's GIMP text effects tutorial. My name is Chris Parker and I have a doozy of a tutorial for you. So check this out. This is the project you're going to be working on today. When you're done, you'll know how to add an image to text, create an inner shadow and more. So are you ready to master this GIMP text effect? Awesome. Let's do it. So let's create our new document by going up to file, selecting new, and then we're going to size it 1920 for the width and 1080 for the height. I do want to change the resolution from 72 to 300, even though this is not going out for print enlargement. It's mostly going to be a file I use for online. I still want to set it to a higher resolution and here's why. Since GIMP is a pixel based software, it doesn't render text as good as a vector based program like Inkscape or Adobe Illustrator. So if you start off with a higher resolution, the edging of the text, especially on a curve like the letter S here, it's going to render much cleaner versus a lower resolution. Then once you resize to this lower resolution 72, which is for online use, it's going to look much better once you've done all those specific types of text effects that you're going to learn in this tutorial, as well as other ones that I have as well. So I'm going to go ahead and change the resolution to 300 for the X and the Y axis. Next, I need to change the color of my document from the background color, which is currently set to a brown color here. And I want to change it to white. So I'm going to select white, click OK. And now we can go ahead and get started. So the next thing we need to do is add our image. All right, I'm going to go ahead and drag my image from my operating system folder, which is actually on a second monitor right now. So you can't see that, but I'm just going to click and drag it over the document. And then once I release, GIMP is going to open up that file in a new layer. Now it's pretty large right now. So I'm going to go ahead and resize that. So I'm going to go to my scale tool. And if I come over here to this icon, we can see I have the scale tool already selected. Now, if you're not seeing all these little drop arrows right here in the bottom right, then you have an older version of GIMP. In the most recent version of GIMP, you can actually place all these different tools into different categories. And that's why you don't see that many tools right now. I can even resize this toolbar smaller like this, which is very similar to Adobe Photoshop. So go ahead and grab your scale tool here, click on the image, and then I'm going to type in 1920 for the width and it should update the height to 1080. And that's because I have this part right here locked like this. So it's going to automatically scale the image accordingly for the height based on what you type in for the width. Once you click scale, it's going to begin rescaling, but I can't see the image right now. And that's because I made it smaller than it was originally and it resized from center. So I need to zoom out of this current document right now so that I can find that file or that layer. So I'm holding down my control key right now and I selected my zoom tool and that allows me to zoom out. And then if I hold down my space bar key, I can navigate around the document. So check your tool options here and make sure you have zoom in selected and hold down the keyboard shortcut, which is right here, which is control for windows and command for Mac users. We also have a zoom out option here if you don't want to use the keyboard shortcut. All right, now we can come over here and grab our move tool and click right here inside of this yellow and black outline. That's where our image is right now. And then we can go ahead and move it into position. Okay, I'm going to grab my zoom tool again and I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. All right, let's go ahead and move this image layer below our background layer because what we need to do now is we need to add our text and then we're going to cut that text out of the background so that the image below shows through. So let's grab our text tool, which is right here, or you can use the keyboard shortcut, which is the letter T. Now for this project, I'm going to use this font, Impact Condensed. 
600 for the size and the color doesn't matter because remember we're just going to cut out the text. So I'm just going to type out waves and then I'm going to grab my move tool again and then just move it over. What I want to do next is I want to center this text directly in the center of our document here and we'll need our alignment tool to do that. So if you had the groups for the different icons, the alignment tool is under the move tool. Or you can use the keyboard shortcut, which is the letter Q. So I'm gonna go ahead and press Q. And then to activate the alignment tool on this particular layer, all we have to do is click on it. And you'll know that that layer is activated to be realigned because you have these little squares in each corner. And then in the tool options, you can align to different items of your document. So for this one, we're just gonna do the first item, which is basically the entire document. And we can click right here where it says align center of target for the horizontal and then middle of target, which is the vertical. So once you do that, it will be perfectly aligned. All right, now we need to make a selection of our text and cut it out so we can see the image below. So we're gonna come over to our Waze layer, right click on it and select alpha to selection to make that selection of the text. Next, let's grab our background layer. Actually, let's go ahead and turn this layer off as well because we don't need to see that anymore. Just click on this icon here. You can also click and drag it to the bottom of all the other layers so that it's hidden from view. Okay, let's grab our background layer. Now we need to right click on this layer and select add alpha channel so that when we cut it out, it is set to transparency versus a solid color. Now we can hit our delete key or our backspace key and that reveals the image below. How cool is that? All right, let's go ahead and deselect our selection. We can do that by going up to select and selecting none. And the keyboard shortcut for that is shift plus control or command if you are on a Mac plus the letter A. All right, so the last thing we need to do is add our inner shadow, which is real easy to do. We're gonna go up to filters, light and shadow, and you're gonna select long shadow. You could probably do it with drop shadow as well, but I prefer long shadow for this project. So let's check it out. All right, so from here, the first thing we wanna do is change the color unless you want a color for that inner shadow. I don't, so I'm gonna go ahead and select a dark gray. Then we're going to change the style from finite to fading. So it's not as harsh as it is right now. We have a hard edge on that inner shadow and I don't like that effect. Maybe you do, that's entirely up to you, but I'm gonna click fading and it's going to add a gradual inner shadow from dark to light to transparent. Next, you can change the inner shadow length by adjusting the midpoint shorter or longer. For this project, I prefer shorter, so I'm gonna go ahead and drop it down to around 40, and that completes the inner shadow.